Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for your nursing licensing exams. In this quiz, we'll review a few different topics that may come up in your exams, and I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, the nurse is getting ready to set up a blood transfusion. As one of his checks, he needs to make sure that the only correct solution or solutions to administer with blood products are, and for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break where you can pause and think about the answer. So the answer here is A, 0.9% sodium chloride, or NaCl, which is also called normal saline. Normal saline is the only recommended solution to be administered with blood products. Some products, like Ringer's lactate, can cause the blood to clot, and other products, like dextrose 5% in water, can cause the blood to hemolyze or break down. And moving on to question number two, a patient is being treated with 0.25 mg PO of digoxin once a day. 5 mg PO of prednisone once a day, and 250 mg of calcium supplements BID. You enter the patient's room to administer his medications. Which of the following assessments is priority? The answer is A. Monitor apical heart rate for 60 seconds. Apical heart rate must be monitored for a full 60 seconds to ensure that the pulse is greater than 60 beats per minute. Digoxin is a medication that is often administered for heart failure, and part of how it works is it reduces heart rate. So if the pulse is less than 60 beats per minute, then the dose should be held and the physician should be notified. Monitoring apical heart rate may also help to assess for possible arrhythmias. And question number three, you are working with a patient who has rule out tuberculosis listed in their chart. Which of the following precautions should you use before entering the patient's room? The answer here is C, airborne. Airborne precautions should be used for any patient who is rule out tuberculosis. Rule out TB means that it is unclear whether or not the patient has TB. Therefore, proper precautions should be put in place in case the patient ends up testing positive for TB. Question number four, you are caring for a 45-year-old female client who is currently 19 weeks pregnant. At the age of 42, the client had a child born at 35 weeks gestation who is currently healthy. The client has no prior history of miscarriage or abortion. What is the client's GTPAL? The answer here is C. G, the number of pregnancies, is 2. T, the number of term births, is 0. P, the number of preterm births, is 1. A, the number of abortions or miscarriages, is 0 and L, the number of living children, is one. Question number five. The nurse receives an adult burn patient who has recently had their right arm caught in a fire. The nurse assesses the wound and confirms that the entire right arm has been burned, and the patient has minor scratches on their right leg. The rule of nines states that approximately what percent of the body has been burned? So here the answer is A, 9%. The rule of nines states that the approximate surface area of each arm is 9%. Question six, you are responding to an emergency call bell that has been pulled by a UCP. As the nurse, you observe a patient currently experiencing a seizure. You know that this patient is prone to seizures and has them regularly. Which of the following is the priority nursing intervention? And this one here is B, place pillows underneath the patient's head. It is important to maintain patient safety first. Placing pillows underneath the patient's head during a seizure can help prevent damage or trauma to the head. Number seven, you are caring for a 24-year-old male patient who has had a recent debilitating spinal cord injury. The patient is currently bedridden due to the injury. Which of the following nursing interventions is a priority to maintain the patient's physical health? The answer here is B. Reposition the client every two hours. Repositioning the client is necessary to prevent pressure ulcer formation, especially useful in bedridden patients. Moving on to question number eight, a patient has been prescribed ondansetron 4 mg POQID for two weeks. What you have is ondansetron 32 mg per 50 ml available. How many milliliters will the patient receive during the entire two weeks? Round doses and final answer to the nearest tenth. The answer here is D, 352.8 milliliters. So here we'll quickly go through the math. We have a formula to calculate the volume to administer per dose, which is equal to the order in milligrams divided by the available in milligrams times the volume in milliliters. 
We can fill those numbers in from our question to get 4 milligrams divided by 32 milligrams times 50 milliliters. That gives us an answer of 6.25 milliliters, but we need to remember to round to the nearest tenth, so we get 6.3 milliliters. So now that we have the volume to administer per dose, we need to calculate the volume to administer per day. To do that, we take the dose in milliliters and we multiply that by the frequency. So 6.3 milliliters times the frequency, which is QID, or four times a day, gives us an answer of 25.2 milliliters per day. And to get the total volume that would be administered in two weeks, we simply take the volume to administer in one day, multiplied by the number of days, which is 14 days. So we have 25.2 mils per day multiplied by 14 days for an answer of 352.8 mils in two weeks, which is already rounded to the nearest tenth. And finally, moving on to question number nine. You are caring for an 86-year-old male cognitive patient with a history of cardiovascular problems. The patient states to you, every time I get out of bed, I feel dizzy and lightheaded. With this information, it is most important to educate your patient on which of the following. And this is A, orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension can be defined as a decrease in systolic blood pressure by 20 or a decrease in diastolic blood pressure by 10 within three minutes of standing when compared to blood pressure from the sitting or supine position. Patients may experience dizziness and feel lightheaded when blood pressure decreases, which increases their risk for falls. And for the last question of this quiz, number 10, a patient has recently been prescribed 20 milligrams of furosemide or Lasix PO once a day for chronic heart failure and will soon be sent home with his medications. What is an appropriate nursing consideration to keep in mind during patient education for discharge? And the answer is A, it is important to follow the medication routine and take the medication early in the day. Taking furosemide, a loop diuretic, will increase urine output and should not be taken at night. When taken at night, it may cause increased sleep disturbance. And that's it for our second licensing exam quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.